Welcome to Beyond Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Petralis, and we are super excited here today. I'll tell you, you know, we've covered a lot of Mefford sports, but I think the most consistent program that I've seen as a teacher in this district for 17 years, um, as well as living in the city, has always been the soccer program. Uh, some of the hardest working kids, in my opinion, I've run summer camps up at the high school, and I see these kids up there 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, captain's practices all summer long. Uh, and it shows the proofs in the pudding with their record, what they've consistently been, and that's because they've had good leadership from the top and their coaching staff, but also players. And these three guys are great leaders for this program. Uh, we're super excited to have them on here today. We're going to be covering them this Saturday, a uh, special memory game, a special memorial game. Uh, so we're super excited and honored to be going out there uh, and covering that. So um, we have three guys here today from uh, Mefford Soccer. We have Seku, we have Arthur, and we have Matt. So guys, welcome to the podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to have you on here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So I just alluded to it a minute ago, and I'll throw this out to whoever realistically wants to take this first. But in the summer, there's no high school team that works as hard as you guys. And I and I mean that. Like I, I used to run a summer camp up at the high school for many years. And we recently just moved it to a different school. But every summer we go up to the field and without feel the soccer team's having captain's practices up there. They're holding each other accountable. And these aren't like your rinky ding captain's practices. These are like full go cardio working out, going against each other, splitting up in the teams, playing half field. I mean, you guys, you work hard, you work really hard as a team, as a program and, and the proof shows of how successful you've been over the year. So just talk about that for you guys being maybe announced captain and then the responsibility you feel like you took on to help lead this team in the off season. Um, I mean, so for captain, we uh, elect captains every year after the season ends, we vote, every player votes. So uh, once, once you get elected captain, you're responsible for all the summer responsibilities and all that. It's been tradition for years and years to do captain's practice. We start at eight o'clock every summer weekday. And we just, we start with running. We, we do about like maybe one to two miles and then some sprints and then we scrimmage for another couple of hours. So. Yeah. So you guys are spending two, three hours up there minimally, you know, and you do that five days a week. You guys do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's incredible stuff. I mean, I was a high school football coach for a long time. And no matter how many times I try to get the captains to ring real kids up and get them together and it's not easy. And you guys do it consistently. You do it well. I mean, for you, Arthur, like uh, Matt mentioned that you guys like really just kind of take it from going. It's a tradition when you're the captains, you know what comes with the responsibility. So for you, like how much pride do you take in that? Obviously you love the sport. You're a captain of this team. You've played for it. You see other great leaders. So what does it mean to you to be a captain of this team and so far leading them into the season? Yeah, it feels, feels good. Yeah. It's a lot of responsibilities on my back, too. So, you know, I, I just got to set a good – I got to be a good role model for everybody around me and just try to get them to be as best they can. Now, I talk – and say, cool, I'll jump to you. I mean, I talked about off-season, right, getting these guys there, getting them working out, getting them familiarized with the way you play stylistically, young kids kind of catching up the speed, especially when you lose graduates. But in season's a whole different story of being a leader and being a captain and, and working your team. So, you know, there's peaks and valleys in your season. There's tough games that you lose or plays that you wish you had back or so on and so forth. And sometimes that can really make a team lose focus if they lose a tough game or a couple back-to-back -back games. And so as a leader in season, how do you kind of make sure that you keep the troops along with these guys kind of focused and eyes on the prize? Um, well, you know, I, I would say, I mean, we've had some tough losses um, during the season, especially during um, those offseason losses. Um, I think it's especially, I guess it's very important to make the younger kids realize that um, winning and losing is a team effort. So it's not um, necessarily something you need to take up on your own. Um, you know, no pointing fingers, thing like that. Like everything has to be done as a team. And, you know, we need to you know, present the values of teamwork um, to the younger generation. I, I just think that's important for our program to grow as much as possible. And it's amazing, like, to hear you guys all say that. Obviously, that consistency of knowing when you're a captain, it's like Spider-Man, like, with great power comes great responsibility, right? And that's kind of, like, symbolic of, like, what you guys do when you take over as captain. 
Um, but obviously it takes a great leader and a great coach and a consistent person who's been there for a while to keep those traditions and keep those things that you understand that the responsibilities you have as a leader of this program. Talk about your coach. Like I went and saw your game yesterday. I, I witnessed arguably one of the funniest things I've ever seen in sports my entire life. And it wasn't really even meant to be funny, but you guys was late in the game and somebody on your team kicked an absolute torpedo towards your sideline and everybody on the bench, like ducked and got out of the way. And your head coach, I, for some reason, just had my eyes on him and he just didn't even move. He just went, like that was it. Like, and this thing missed him by like two feet. It wasn't like it missed him by like eight or nine feet. Like this could have taken his face off, but he didn't even move. And I was like, wow, this dude, like you guys must love him. I mean, you must love him. Right. I mean, I'll let anyone take it first, but I saw that and I was like, man, that's a guy I run for a wall for like zero no, fear. Like he seems like he has. No. Yeah. Coach Mike, he's, he, he's, He's just he's just a different kind of coach, you know, like, I mean, he comes off as this, you know, really strict, hard guy, but, you know, he gives you the truth. And, um, you know, he's been around the game like his whole life. So it's like he knows the game inside out and he knows how people play it, you know, so it's just he, he really he's really got adapting to his players um, and just working with what he got and making the best out of it. So we really commend him for it. Yeah. And I, I mean, he's been there for I don't know, like 20, 30 years, like forever. I don't, he's he's like a father to like a bunch of the kids. It's, I don't know, he's a great guy. We all love him. Yeah. Um, I got to meet Coach Mike this year. You know, I thought he was very strict in the beginning, but it's just all the dedication he has for the team. It's just like unbelievable. He's always going to be there, even if you need him off the field, when you're not playing soccer, even if you need it. He's gonna be there, so that's what I really like about him too. Yeah, and you know, that's kind of I've heard that. Like I've heard how he is like for his players, but especially like out of season or off the field. I know he has. I mean, I don't know if he still does, but I remember days that he was having like the whole team over for dinner. And yeah, today we had a team. Greek dinner. families, man, they cook big deal. I mean, I'm a Greek, so I get it. Like you know, best cooks around and everything else. But um, that's the type of stuff. I mean, that's the type of leader you like. You really want to play for at the end of the day because you know sports are sports, and we're competitive, and you want to win, right? You put all that work, and you want to win. But there's bigger pictures to sports, and there's so many life lessons. Like to hear you guys like just say. Yeah, you know, as captains, we know what comes with it. We got to be in touch with people. We got to get the kids down there. We got to be good leaders. Like, those are life skills, guys. Like, those are life skills that you will take with you into college and being disciplined to wake up to go to class instead of skipping it or going to internships or playing collegiately. And it's a full time. Like, so you guys don't know it yet, but I'm telling you, you guys are well equipped for life when you come out of here. And a lot of that has to do with what you learn and the values you play in soccer. Yeah, um, you go ahead, sorry. go for it. Um, go for it. He's definitely, he said that a bunch of times, like he, he wants us to be amazing at soccer, but at the end of the day, he wants us to go to college, be successful in life, you know? And that's it. I mean, playing high school sports, I was my coach for a long time, but I used to like tell my players when they were looking at colleges and like, this school looks awesome. This school got, you know, got in touch with me. I was like, well, what do you want to go to school for? Like put football aside. Like, what is it you want to study? And some people don't know, and that's okay. But a lot of times, like, oh, I want to study this program. Like, well, does that school have that? And you're like, I, I don't know. And it's just like, well, that's the stuff you got to kind of think of because if you tear your knee up or you just don't love it anymore when you go to college, it's like, well, what are you going to fall back on and do? So you, you know, you obviously want to make sure that you make those right decisions. And that comes with what you guys are learning about yourselves as soccer players, as young men, uh, and obviously as student athletes. I'm a teacher in Medford. I'm a fifth grade elementary teacher at the McGlynn School. I don't know if any of you guys ever went to the McGlynn before. Um, or the middle school side, but um, so I love it. I'm invested in the city. I'm invested in the kids, seeing them play sports as they get older is awesome, especially when you see them as 10 and 11 year olds. And then you see them as teenagers almost graduating um, for you guys, you're met for public school kids, or you might've come to the school system later on in your career. Is there a teacher that you had or that you currently have right now? That just like stands out to you in a, in a sense, like, I guess, like coach, right? Like someone who like really cares about you, really cares about the kids, fun class, you know, might care about you outside of class too and check in on you. Um, I always love to give teachers love, especially when I have met for kids on here. Cause a lot of times I know the name, I'm like, oh yeah, I know who that person is. So, uh, and maybe not, maybe there's no teachers you want to give love to too. And that's totally fine. But I'm um, just curious, just throwing it out there. If anybody wants to answer it. Yeah, so I have two teachers that has a special place in my heart, Okay. which is um, I have Mrs. Scary. Mrs. Scary is just super Man. nice guy. The 
a man. And also, he, he also just really cares about you outside of school too, and how you're doing. Yeah. And and then if like if you're really doing bad in this class, he would just like try to lift you up and not just bring you down. And I had this middle school teacher with which I saw her today, Miss Bellini. Oh my god, was, seventh grade science, dude. Of course uh, I do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Miss Bellini is just the sweetest. There's there's just no way possible you can ever, ever not like her. You can't just like Yeah. She's just like so happy. Like I feel like every time I walk by, she just smiles and it just like yeah, makes always me smile. Always <laughs> good environment. She always teaching. Yeah, she's yeah. such a good yeah. Yeah, she has a cool Instagram teaching page now that she shows all her stuff on. It, it's cool. She does a good job for sure. Anybody um, else you guys want to show love to here? Yeah, for me. Um, so uh, it's my computer science teacher um, or programming web development teacher, Miss Miller. Uh, I've had her since my sophomore year, um, since it's kind of the career that I want to pursue in college. Yeah. And um, she's just a great person. You know, she's very understanding. Um, she's, she's in, in the, similar to coach Mike, you know, she has that adaptive skill to students. Um, you know, she's really good to adapting to your needs, your, you know, learning needs. And I think that she's just, you know, one of the best teach. She, she's like a parent, parent of like a parent figure to me. So yeah. I just think she's just a really important teacher in my life. Very cool, man. Very cool to hear that guys. It's real nice to hear. Do you want to add any on Matt? Uh, I was also thinking Mr. Scary or Miss uh, Peanut too. I play basketball, so I mean we're. I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, he's not coaching next year. So I heard all... that. I wrote him a nice little message, and I wrote a thing on Facebook because yeah, I mean he we covered his program two years in a row, and he open door policy with him. He's super nice. Yeah, yeah, we're all sad to see him go, but he's always there for us. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's tough when you lose like a good coach and someone. It's it's hard. It's hard for new change, and you know, hopefully, it stays close within there. Uh, with with coaching, we'll see. But um, so a big thing I love to ask is, and I have a lot of coaches on here, and I always get eye rolls. And I'll tell you why I'm asking this after because we're developing something here. And we'll talk about it. But music, like when you guys are like practicing or for a big game, like type of music you listen to maybe individually or as a team like when you get up to the field like what artists what songs like what gets you juiced up a little bit before the big game uh i mean not everyone likes it but there's a lot of eminem okay uh, okay that was, so i remember sophomore year that was a huge tradition we listened to him before every game turn off the lights just like listen to a song nobody talks so you're in uh, the we, locker room, you just like listen to it. Yeah, we went undefeated, so it did something. Um, That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and there's, there's also a lot of Brazilian music. A lot of Brazilian music. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's a very diverse mix. You know, we got all kinds of music. You know, it depends on whatever anybody's feeling that day. Are you guys um, a pretty? Are you a pretty diverse team? Yeah. 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 So I mean, that makes sense then, right? I mean, that kind of fits. You know, fits the bill for you guys for sure. Yeah. Any song, like any songs that you listen to, like Brazilian music that you now like find yourself seeking out on like Spotify or YouTube or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. I, you know, I, when I coach, man, sometimes kids like we listen to, I feel like when I coach, it was like the heart of Drake. Like every fall, it felt like Drake was coming out with like a new album or a new song or a new collaboration. And the kids are just like blaring in the locker room all the time. So for me, like I started listening to Drake, like outside the locker room. Cause you just hear it like so much. You're just like, you know, you're singing it to yourself and like, you know how it is when a song gets catchy, but um, yeah, music's a big thing. Arthur, what's your, what's your take on music? What What is it you listen to that gets you a little fired up? Uh, I really, I really like rap music, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like rap music. And I like I also like R and B soul music. Yeah. Yeah, so a little bit of everything. So that's like so for us at Beyond, we've covered like a lot of sports over the last three years, a lot of seasons. And I coach, and the one thing I've been asking coach, I kind of been keeping like tabs on this a little bit. And we covered Malden like basketball last year and like a few other uh like uh girls basketball, boys basketball, volleyball. We covered a lot. And I noticed the AD was like DJing a ton. Like he had all this equipment. He was like, put, it was just like a playlist that he was like clicking songs. 
And he was telling me about the system and how much schools buy for it. It's like a lot of money. So we developed the playlist here at Beyond. And we had like a couple DJs from Boston that like, you know, kind of got us like top 40 music and it's balanced across the board. It's like every type of music imagines probably like your guys playlist truthfully before a game and everything's like his mixes or whatever. And now we've been kind of giving it to schools a little bit and they're loving it. Like they're loving it because one, you don't have to worry about language or inappropriate language or anything like that. But two, it's just a playlist that you could start it at minute two, minute eight, minute 12, minute 30. And you're going to get like almost a different intro. Like it mixes into a bunch of different intros. So you don't have to come out to the same intro, like all the time. Like, so that's why I'm asking, because I know music in, in general and pop culture is just such a big part of sports in general. You know, when you go on Instagram, any clip that you see or any cool clip that you see, a lot of it is the music keeps you maybe on there for a few more seconds or the music gets you that much more interested in the clip or that more juiced up when you kind of see it. So I know music is just big in general, but especially with sports, it seems to just become one. So, you know, maybe we'll throw the Beyond playlist at you guys. Uh, for your summer, well, you guys won't be doing the summer workouts, but maybe for the next captains, you guys can help me pass down the summer playlist to them. So that will be a lot of fun. Um, now I know like when I play, I played at Allen to Catholic, I coached Allen to Catholic and there were certain schools that we just got fired up for like a little bit more than others. Like for me, it was always Austin prep or St. Mary's. Those were like the two schools that like, when we played them, everybody was just a little bit more locked in. Everybody was just a little bit more focused. Uh, and the game was just a little more physical, a little bit more chippy. And I'm sure in soccer, it's the same way when you play certain teams, what team in the GBL or maybe a non-league opponent, when you guys play them, it is like dropping the gloves and really going at it with them. Somerville. Like I saw that game. So was was that are those games that intense pretty much like all the time? Yeah. Um yeah. Somerville, it's been known they're like their rival, you know, um, especially when it comes to soccer. So yeah, every time we play Somerville, there's always you know, coach always has sort of a chip on his shoulder. You know, it's he just really wants to beat them. We all do, you know. So yeah. Yeah, no, I think Go ahead, go ahead. There's also some history going back. Like I think coach coach with some of the their coaches, so he he knows everyone. So well, Coach cool. Carpelli, who used to coach there, was yeah. the head coach of Meffer for a really long time. And I think Coach Petritus was an assistant coach for a really long time. Um, and then Coach Carpelli went to Somerville and then Coach Petritus took over. So that's kind of I think where that Mefford, you know, Somerville rivalry kind of really, I think, took a little bit of you know, more intense look because two really good coaches built two really good programs. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a barn burner every time. It's a tight game every time. Is there any other team in the GBL that you, not necessarily like a big rivalry game, but a team you just like, I don't ever want to lose this team. Or, I don't want this team to ever beat us. Or is there a team like that? Yeah, I'd say ever. Yeah. We don't, we always don't want to lose to Everett. We always, it's Everett and some of us. Yeah. And we I don't include Revere because never just want to lose to those teams. You know, they get you in football, you good. get them in soccer. Like that's just the way it is, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. So that I mean, yeah, GBL. I, I, I'm sure if I asked that to every team, they might have a different answer of a team in the GBL who they just can't see. But I saw that game, you guys Tuesday. I was like, this is a pretty intense game. So to hear you guys not even hesitate and say Somerville, you know, that makes perfect sense. Um, for you guys now, you obviously were covering you Saturday. I know you have a makeup game against Everett, ironically enough. Um, and then that kind of caps off your regular season and you guys are no strangers to, to, um, playoffs and playing in the playoffs, um, for you or for you guys and whoever wants to take this, that's fine. When it's a different season now, now you get into playoff mode, you're close to playoff mode. You're going to see where you draw. You're going to see who you draw, where you're playing, where you could be playing at home or maybe traveling for you guys as the leaders of this program amongst the players. How do things switch into the second season now? Like you maybe as leaders, like, are you guys a little tougher on kids? Are you a little bit more demanding? Is there a sense of just like no BS when it comes to, okay, this is our spot. Here we go. We're locked in from here on out. I mean, how does that mentality change from the end of the regular season to now going into playoffs? Um, well, I guess some people would perceive it as a little different. Um, but to me personally, I mean, every game from now is a playoff game. You know, our yeah. coach has made that clear to us. Like, you know, every single game is a must game win if we want a higher place. You know, like if we want 
higher place in the rankings or if we want, you know, a home playoff game. Like, so there's just, there's a lot at stake. Um, and the simple fact is that we just can't lose. So. Yeah. Now we, you guys, you told me before you're sitting currently nine, four and two. Yeah. Nine, four and two. Yeah. With, now with that, do you think that that at a nine, four and two mark? I mean, I don't know. Cause I haven't checked the power rankings or anything like that. Do you think you guys did a, a, a place well enough to, to get a home game? Um, not, not yet. It okay. depends. Well, I think it depends. It might depend on our Saturday game, but. And who are you guys playing Saturday? Octon Box, man. Acton Boxborough. Yeah, they. Yeah. I think they're fourth right now. So. Yeah, so they're, they're they're pretty high in the rankings. So beating them would definitely like get high, like you know there are higher chances of getting a home playoff game. Yeah, okay. it's a more meaningful game. You know? Well, I think that's right. I think your coach is right for saying that every game is a playoff game because you knock that team off point wise, you're going to get a ton of points for it, and that could be good enough to kind of catapult you up. Um, how are you guys like when you're on the road now? Like, let's hypothetically, I'm sure you've been on the road for the playoffs or just in regular season. Like at home, it's different. You're at the school, you're in the locker room, you have your tradition, you come up, you do your thing. But a bus ride to a place, sometimes traveling to a place like Everett, even though it's the next town over, can take you a half hour to get there with traffic and everything else at a certain time. So how are you guys like make sure that your team stays focused on like a team bus, getting off the bus, stretching out all that stuff? I mean, I don't mean to keep throwing these types of questions at you. But you guys are pretty mature, honestly. And like I've had a lot of different captains on from different teams. And I'm just asking you guys in depth questions. because You guys are giving great answers. And I think the audience is, yeah, these kids are 17, 18 years old. So it's just I keep going with this because I'm just like so interested to see how you guys continue to lead in different areas. So on the road, how are you guys getting these kids locked in, focused and ready to go? Well, it's it also this has been a tradition for years. It's no talking. Love it. Way. Love it. Love it. Awesome. We do that in football too. Shut your mouth on the bus and lock in, right? And, like, love it. Yeah. And if we lose, no talking. So love it. That's a great that. rule. Why should you yeah. be talking, right? If you lose, what the hell are you talking about? Right? Yeah. Like you should be mad and sad, right? Like, or thinking about the next game. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. So awesome. We also also no phones, no, no music, nothing. So that's great. So it is a dead silent bus ride there. Doesn't now, matter if you win, long. what's it like on the ride home? That is just, depending on the team, especially if it's a, it's a big game for us. It's just party. Yeah. I yeah. love it, dude. I love it. And, and then you guys are allowed to obviously play music, right? Um, um, I mean, we don't. No, we don't no, 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 still no music. Still no music. We so do have our tradition. Just a no-go period. We do have a traditional like song on our way back. What is it? Well, when we're riding up the the hill on Winthrop Street, it's a. Uh, I mean, I don't. Oh, it's like, like a the, song that you would sing, yeah, we, like yeah. for the. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we had that too. That's funny. We did like the same thing, like when we got on Mefford Street, like right going down to Island Catholic. We all put the windows down and like sing our. Yeah, like, we put the windows whatever. down. You know, we started yeah, banging, okay, cool. we started singing. Yeah. That stuff's missing in sports. I mean, I, we used to like, I see guys that like I played with or guys that are graduated that school and they play football and you're like, Oh, you Cougars. I like, they sing it. Like guys like love it, you know? And so that stuff's cool because when you're my age, when you're like 40, you're going to like, remember that stuff. And you might talk to a few guys in the team. still, and you're going to be laughing about those things. Like we still sing the fight song here and there every once in a while too. So it, that's a cool tradition to have for sure. Um, do you, any of you guys play other sports? Do you guys play any other sports at all? I play basketball. Oh, yeah. You said that. You play for Coach Gary Durr. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty successful program. The last few years, you guys have been great. We've covered you. I think last year you finished the regular, the regular season. Weren't you like 16, 4? 14 and 6. 14 yeah. and 6. Okay. Okay. So you're like right there. And you lost a bunch of games, if I remember, like early. I would think you went like 0 and 3 or yeah, 0 and 4, we right? yeah something like that like i think at one time we we're like one and three maybe yeah because i think i covered you at the tufts classic against somerville and then you guys kind of like i felt like took off from there I remember yeah. i checked in with coach torts like two or three weeks late and you still hadn't lost in the game you know so um that's cool you play other sports obviously perspective now any of you guys looking to play collegiately have you talked to college coaches if so like yeah just let us know i'm very curious to see if you got any of you guys looking to play that at that next level um, I mean, me and Seiko are the seniors, so. Wait, Arthur, uh, what year are you? I'm a sophomore. What? For real? 
Yeah. You look like you're 20 years old. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> I'm still I'm still very young. That's good for you, man. Holy moly. Okay, so for you two seniors, I didn't know that. I had no idea. I would have guessed all three of you were seniors. So that's that's crazy. Okay, so for Matt and Seku, you guys you guys looking anywhere particular or any schools interested in you guys? Um, we we had the uh, Salem State coach at a game a couple weeks ago. He actually he talked to me and Seku. Uh, we just been email. I mean, I can't speak for Seku, but I've been emailing over and over again. Uh, I really like Endicott. Uh, I'm looking at WPI, you know, just a bunch of state uh, schools in New England. Yeah, um, same for me. I mean, main focus right now is Bentley. I've been trying to get, like, you know, I've known the coach because I played for his club for a little bit. Um, and I've just been trying to email coaches, um, like, also WPI and, um, you know, UMass Dartmouth, you know, other New England schools. So, yeah, it's just... It's just the process of recruitment. It's just catching up. Anything like, so So our audience ranges, right? Like we are balanced across the board from 18 to 42. Like it's 18 to 24, 25 to like 30 something. And then whatever, like we are like one third, one third, one third, as far as our listening base goes. But we do have a lot of high school athletes that like give us feedback about when we have athletes on to talk about the college recruit process, because they've maybe never gone through it before, or maybe a junior who wants to kind of hear that stuff. Is there anything you guys would share about the recruitment process, like positive things or things just to maybe be aware of that you maybe weren't aware of yourself as you're going through it now? Yeah. Um, I would say coaches just love visuals. You know, you have the footage, make a montage, send it and make it interesting. Not necessarily with the scenery, but you're playing, you know, your, your foot, like, you know, they want to see what you can do at first hand. Cause most coaches, you know, they, they look at it to see what you have first 20 seconds. If they don't like it, they skip. Cause they got a bunch of emails to go through. Yeah. So, and another key important piece is to start early, you know, like that's, that's what I was going to say. Ju- junior year, you got You got to get on it like real quick um, because time flies. So. Yeah. I'd say just start early, send them your schedule. Uh, go to go to their camps, get your face, um, yeah. show them your face, you know? Yeah. That's great. You know, and it's funny you say highlight reels. When you guys make your highlight reels, how long are you, like, on average is your highlight reel? Because I'm sure college coaches don't want to see, like, a 25-minute highlight reel either. Oh, yeah. Three three to five minutes are your most important clips um, throughout – uh, yeah, we've been doing that know. a lot like we just did that for softball we've done that for a couple of football teams like kids are just like we've either gone to film a game for them like personally like individually to kind of catch them uh or they've kind of given us clips we've taken clips from like their huddle accounts and things like that and kind of built it so if you guys ever need help with that stuff definitely feel free to reach out you know i can do what i can to help you out for sure um but yeah starting that process early like i was going to kind of say that if you guys didn't that's the most important thing. Like all the feedback that I've got from kids is like, man, I didn't start until my senior year in the fall or I didn't start till my senior year in December, you know? And at that point it's not too late, but it's, it's close. I mean, it's close to being too late because coaches really know after your senior season in the fall, like who they kind of want, who they're recruiting or who they've been talking to. So that's great advice for you guys. And, and for us and for, and for Arthur, I mean, Arthur's probably going to be going through his process very soon. So um, for you, Arthur, I, I, I'm going to ask you this just because I didn't know you were a sophomore, but these guys as leaders, being a young guy, like, how do you look to these guys and say, huh, this is the stuff that I maybe want to continue or have down the road as being a part of this program to continue those traditions and to continue those positive things in the program? Wait, sorry, I didn't get that in. That's all right, you chopping up a little bit. So I was just asking, like, being a sophomore and seeing these guys and how well yeah. they lead, like, what are these some of these things that you're going to take into, like, your junior year, your senior year, to make sure that these traditions of good leadership continue in your program? That makes sense? Uh, you know, yeah. So, like, they have more... We'll we'll come back. We'll come back. Arthur, take a minute, buddy. We're having a hard time hearing you. Uh, you, You're kind of a little choppy in and out. So just give it like a minute. No biggie. Do this happens pretty much every podcast I'm on. Technology is technology. So uh, sometimes try to like shut the screen off for a second and then try to pop it back on because sometimes people have like a lot of 
a lot more success doing that. Can you hear me a little right. bit better now or now? Can you hear me? I think we lost him a little bit. That's okay. Figure yeah, it out. I'll get the, back in there. Oh, we kind of hear him a little bit. I we just have. A, can you guys not hear him either? Or is it just my ends? Uh, he, he's kind of choppy. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I just want to make sure I'm not like the outlier here. Yeah. If you want, Arthur, if you can hear me, log out and then log back in. I'll let you back in. Sometimes that just like makes everything better. Um, but jumping into like the last segment for you guys, I mean, obviously your game is important. Acton Boxborough you have coming up on Saturday and then you have a makeup game against Everett. Now, when's that last game? Um, I'm not sure that it's like officially yeah, yeah. scheduled. I, I don't, I'm not sure, Matt, do you know? No, I don't know. All yeah, right. So playoffs, you probably know by the end of next week. Yeah. Probably where where you fall and where you rank, and then playoffs will start probably what the week after that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So the last thing, you know, I, I first want to thank you guys for coming on here. I want to sign off without our guy Arthur. So hopefully, his uh, reception comes back to life at some point. But um, the last question that I typically like to ask a lot of young student athletes on here, just in general, is what is your advice to young student athletes, kids that are eighth graders or maybe even freshmen in program that are about to come in or have been a part of a program for a year? What would be the advice you give them over the next three years, knowing that your career is close to being over here? It's close to being over. And I don't mean to put a sad damper on this, but that that's true, right? I mean, your high school playing career for all intents and purposes is almost over. So what would be your advice to those young athletes out there as they have their career kind of in front of them and you guys are more on the back end of it? Um, well, I, I'd start with saying just work hard, off season work hard. Uh, and then just don't be nervous about like upperclassmen or anything. Just play your game, be yourself, just work hard. Yeah, personally, I I think it's about having fun. You know, like if you're playing high school sports, you're meant to have, you know, it's meant to have fun, you know, and it's also meant to like focus on those key pieces of, you know, teamwork and, and those things that stem out to be like other themes that you need to like focus on in, 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 in the real world. So, um, I think it's just about having fun, playing, playing to have fun. Obviously, there's a competitive side to it, um, but you know, just make sure you're having fun. Cool. Well, guys, listen, you guys are exceptional. Like, honestly, I'm really glad you guys came on here today. I think you guys are great. And I always like to end. I like to end with the serious question, but I like to end with the funny question too. So I'm going to ask you this question. I love asking this question. Kids always get a kick out of it. Who is the baddest dude on your team. Like if you, you're going to war against Somerville or you're going to war in the playoffs, who's the dude that you want by your side going to war with knowing that like this dude's just nuts and you want him and you, you know, they're going to give it their all and, and everything else. I don't even know if I phrase that the right way, but you, I think you guys know what I'm trying to say. Um, Other than our coach, I'd say probably our striker Robinson. I mean, He's just no nonsense. I mean, he's a good. I don't know. I don't know who, who's the kid? Who's the kid on your team? I saw this on Tuesday, and you guys may not remember it, but it was towards the end of the game. He was a defenseman. He like slid the uh, like some kid was coming down like one on one. He took a good angle and he like slid a uh, slide yeah. and kicked the ball. And then I he kind of nice. steered the kid for like five seconds. I'm like, who is this kid? I was, <laughs> I was, I was gonna say him. Um, although he's a new word he, he's a new player to the to the program yeah. um so he's not like fully um you know ingrained in the system um yeah. so he, he makes some mistakes and stuff but i think it's kenson like he's new and all but he gives it a hundred percent every time even though he does make mistakes like he is he's always ready to throw throw down the gloves go to war you know so like if i have him by on the team you know i'm not really worrying Mm. Oh, he's, he's not really scared of anybody you could tell like he just stared at the kid i was like look at this kid like yeah. no fair yeah <laughs> arthur can you hear us i hope so can you hear us yeah we're having a little trouble still hearing you buddy but listen 
you're the man. I know we can't hear you a lot. It's I know like, you can't like, hear me, so I'll just say it. Like, I can't believe, first of all, that you're a sophomore. Um, but I get it, man. Sometimes in Zoom, you just have not great service and it happens. I can see you, but when you for some reason unmute, it's hard to hear. I'll give you one more chance. You, can you hear me? Yeah, I think it's just tough service. But that's all right. That's all right. I, I just want to say, guys, this has been a ton of fun. I can't wait to cover you guys on Saturday. Um, you know, honestly, this is like the first soccer game that we're covering. Um, and to me, what better team, in my opinion, than the most consistent program that's been going on for the past 20 years in the school, and that's the soccer program. So um, if if the game's as intense as it was I saw on Tuesday – then I'm psyched. Like I'm like pumped to see you guys play. And now knowing the meaning behind these games a little bit and understanding playoff position and where you guys are at. Um, yeah. I'm even more locked in. Like I plan on getting there a little bit earlier now and just making sure that I kind of catch everything. But uh, it's, it was an honor having you guys on here today. You're extremely mature, great leaders to kind of hear your program and the traditions that it has. And you guys understanding the importance of that uh, is just, you don't see that in a lot of programs. So you know, tip of the cap to you guys and what you've done and what you've been through and what you've been a part of for the last four years. And you got a big fan here and beyond, man. We're going to be rooting you guys on. Like, send us clips, you know, send us stuff from games, like even playoffs, like even small things, just like pregame stuff. Like, we'll put anything up there for you guys as you guys rock. And uh, who knows, man, keep us in touch with the playoffs. Maybe we'll come down to a game and just even if it's an away game and just like be there. So, um, I'm pumped. I'm really glad we had you guys on. I'm psyched for Saturday and I really appreciate the time today. So thanks. Thank, thank you, you so having... much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. So um, we'll talk off air a little bit, but guys, this is beyond podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Petrellis, Seku, Matt, and our guy, Arthur. you guys have been great. Uh, we have double coverage actually this weekend for everybody that's listening Friday night, we're at Arlington High School, uh, Arlington Winchester, huge senior night game, huge game for Arlington for the playoffs for them. And in my opinion, the best running back in the state in Caden Mills. I uh, can't wait to see him pop off and do really well. And then Saturday, you know, again, Mefford soccer, these guys, ready to rock, huge game, playoff implications. So beyond's busy, we're excited. We're covering great teams, great kids, and it's going to be awesome. So uh, without further ado, guys, good luck Saturday. I'm your host, Anthony Petralis. Till next time. Thank you.